briefly demonstrate long tail cast on. Personally, I don't like this cast on because for one thing, you can never figure out how long the tail should be. And for another, it's usually too tight. But this is worth learning because the variations are very useful. So I will show you long tail cast on and then I will show you the German twisted variation and then I'll show you the Channel Island variation all based on the long tail cast on. So you might as well learn to master this so you can do the variations. Long tail cast on, you do not need a slip knot for your first stitch. Follow Elizabeth Zimmerman's advice, just dive right in, there is your first stitch. You have the yarn position, your long tail off your thumb, the rest of your yarn off your finger. Dive right in, twist the yarn, there is your number one stitch. Now, you pulled up a V, just dip in, make a loop, let it go. Every time you do this, you lose it on your thumb and then you regain it on your thumb. So I'll do a few of these until you get it. Notice how the thumb lets it go and then regains it. Okay, enough of long tail. Work on that on your own, master it. Now, remembering how you do long tail, let's do a variation called the Twisted German. Same setup. You would start the same way. Now go under both strands, dip into this strand, grab your yarn, let it out and let it off. And again, your thumb lets go completely. Again, under both strands, dip your needle in, grab your loop, come back, let it untwist off your thumb and let it drop off completely off your thumb. Okay, I will show you again. This was your long tail. Just grabbing it once. This is your German twisted. Go under, through, round the loop. Now here's the tricky part. Move your thumb out of the way, let it off, and then regain your yarn. Okay, I'll remind you again. This is your simple long tail. This is your German twisted. Under both, through, wrap around, let your thumb untwist it, pull it through. This is your new stitch, let everything go. Don't pull it too tightly. Under both, through, around, through, grab. So once you master the long tail, which I'll do again here, then just consider a little more effort for a beautiful, stretchy, wonderful cast on. As far as your tail goes, I can't, t I, I tell you, you will have to learn. I generally take one stitch per inch, but it depends upon the thickness of the yarn. You will just have to do it until you can get it. Long tail, very simple. Twisted German, a couple extra steps. Under both, through, around, and let it off. Regain your stitch. There you go. Okay, I will now show you how to do another variation called the Channel Island Cast On. And again, it's based on long tail. We'll start again with our first stitch, which again, following the advice of our mentor, Elizabeth Zimmerman, dive in, there is your first stitch. Now, notice how the yarn is wrapped around the thumb for your long tail. For the Channel Island, we are going to wrap it twice counterclockwise. So we go around the other way and now we dip in, grab our yarn and come out. Pull it up nicely. The next stitch and every other stitch is a simple yarn over. So that's half your work right there. Now we take our yarn and we unwrap it. We wrap it twice counterclockwise around the thumb, put it in, pull it up gently, do a yarn over. We're back here, but now we have to change the position of the yarn the other way and twice. Go through, wrap around, pull it gently. And we do our simple yarn over. Our thumb is set up for long tail. We've got to undo it twice the other way. And I'll just do a few more so you can get the idea of how it's going to look. And then I'll show you how it looks when you're done. When your 
knitting in the round, which of course is what you're doing, and you want to join your Channel Island cast on, your first stitch is considered to be a yarn over, like first, third, fifth, and so on. So when you're done, you must make sure to finish with the stitch wrapped around the thumb twice counterclockwise the wrong way. That would be your last stitch. When you're going all the way around and you start in the round, you would start with a purl. The yarn overs in the round become your purls. And now I'll show you how it looks in action. This is the Channel Island cast on. This is where it started and worked up. And all those yarn overs, they became the purl stitches here. And all the little beads, they were your yarn wrapped twice around your thumb counterclockwise. So this becomes this. The yarn overs become your purls. This is very good when you're doing knit one, purl one. I don't think you would use it for just a plain old knit two, purl two because it wouldn't work. It's also good if you want a garter stitch edge because you would then have the beading, which is very nice. Now, when you are actually using Channel Island cast on for something traditional, such as a Gansey, you would actually double the strand of yarn that goes around the thumb. This would be doubled to make a very strong and durable cast on because when you're out there in the salt water and the fishing nets, you want to make sure your cast on is durable. But for ordinary sweaters, for a child sweater like this, a single strand twice wrapped counterclockwise around the thumb is enough. So master your long tail and then learn your variations. Channel Island cast on, twisted German cast on, and there you have it.